Well, hey, friends, this is Jennifer, and this is The Jennifer Allwood Show, the podcast for women who want to find freedom in both their life and in their business. I own a multi seven figure a year coaching business. I'm also a certified life coach. So I have the honor of helping thousands of women every single month make money in the online space and help them to get unstuck from whatever is holding them back, all without sacrificing their faith or their family. In this show, you're going to get the very best life and business advice, always with a healthy dose of Jesus. So buckle in, my friend. I'm so so excited that you are here. Well, welcome back to the podcast, my friends. This is Jennifer, and this is the Jennifer Allwood Show. We're going to have a fun time talking today about a topic that I have never talked about on this podcast. Between this and the Monday Fire that I used to do, we've got well over probably close to 400 podcast episodes at this point, and I have never talked about... Um, how to get the most out of like business events, masterminds that you go to, how to try to get as much of as you can out of like business travel as an entrepreneur. And so we're going to do a podcast episode on that today. I say we, like I'm French. No, I'm going to do a podcast episode on that topic today. And listen, I got the idea for this when I was recently traveling to Colorado Springs for business. And um, we have a driver, we have a driving service that has driven our family for four and a half years now in Kansas City. And um, and so my driver, you know, took me to the airport, dropped me off at the front door. I rushed to TSA, um, you know, because I'm always basically just <laughs> pressed for time um, and, you know, got on my flight, but was sitting there like thinking, man, Travel for me now is so different than travel was for me, let's say five years ago or six years ago. And I've learned so much and stretched myself to travel differently. And I was thinking, I need to share this with you guys because even though this podcast has the possibility of triggering a couple of you, like that has to be really, really okay with me because some of you, you've never spent extra money or put effort extra effort into your business travel. You've never thought of yourself as the type of person who would upgrade or invest in an experience. And this post is possibly going to stretch you just a little bit. And I'm actually okay with that. Here's what I know to be true. Um, There are a lot of people who travel for business, but who have yet to invest in the experience of the travel itself. And they think that in their business traveling that, you know, if they save money, that that's going to, you know, be good for them financially. But instead, they're adding to the stress of the travel itself. So even though they're saving in one area, which is dollars, they're spending in another area, which is like energy and emotion and stress level. And so I just want to kind of show you some things today that if you're really serious about going to some of you know the business events that you've got on the calendar for the rest of this year, or even like my ladies who are coming to um, Kansas City in November for my next level mastermind, I want you to really listen to this because you're investing in getting as much as possible out of that conference, out of that event, out of that mastermind, whatever, right? And I, if you'll think about some of these things and let them stretch you just slightly, I think that you will be surprised at how it makes you feel. And anyone who has recently been in my life coaching group or gone through my life coaching challenge knows that the way that we think and then the way that we feel affects the way that we act and the way that we behave. And so when you feel a different way, when you think about yourself in a different way and you put things into place so that you feel a different way when you're traveling, it's amazing how you'll behave differently, okay? So I've got six tips for you today. If you are a note taker, this is a good time to write some stuff down, all right? So number one, get a driver to the airport. Listen, I'm not talking about your spouse, I'm not talking about your BFF, and I'm not talking about Uber. I said what I said. Get a service. If you're here in Kansas City, holler at me. I'll share the name of our service with you. They will literally pick you up on the driveway. Have you sit in the back seat. They put the luggage in the back for you. They drop you off at the front door. Most of you know that my favorite airline is Southwest. I fly Southwest the majority of our time um, to our home in Florida and to our next home, which will be in Scottsdale. And so I take Southwest to both of those places whenever possible. At the Kansas City Airport, you know, there's... um, You're able to just drive up to the front. I'm able to check my luggage, usually outside. Talk about a bougie feeling. It is so nice to have somebody pick you up on your doorstep and take you right to the doorstep of the airport. You will feel like a queen. 
and you will never go back to driving yourself. Now, listen, is it going to be probably at least double the cost of an Uber? It will. But what is the cost of you feeling super professional when a lot of the time you're going to a professional event? Also, I can for so long remember how I would frantically drive myself to the airport. I would park in long-term parking. I would take a shuttle over to the airport. I would be dragging all my own bags. I'd be exhausted before I even got on an airplane. This is not the time to be saving all the dollars, okay? And I know you could get a friend to drop you off or something, but listen, you're an entrepreneur. You make money. Business travel is a write-off. Okay. And having somebody actually a driver in an actual driving service take you to the airport makes you feel like a rock star. When you feel like a rock star, you show up, you show out like a rock star. So stop being so cheap and, and let your family and your friends off the hook. Get yourself a driver. You will never go back. Okay. That's number one. Point number two, get TSA approved. Listen. Ladies, it's like $90 for five years. It is worth every single dollar. You whiz right through a line that is always way shorter. You don't have to remove your shoes. You don't have to take your laptop out of your bag. You will feel so differently. We have gotten our entire family TSA approved. And what happened is there was one time, I think we were coming back. This was right before we adopted Ari. I think we were coming back from a vacation where we had been in Mexico or something. And per the usual for the Allwood family, we're rolling up to the airport with minutes to spare. You know, we knew we were going to be rushed, et cetera. So we get inside the airport and the TSA line had like nobody in it. The other line had hundreds of people, you guys, hundreds. And I, I was TSA approved at the time, but the rest of the family wasn't. And so I said to our whole family, like, we are never doing this again. $90 for five years. I mean, you do the math right there. What is that? 15, 20 bucks, something like that a year in order to just have the peace of going through a faster line, not having to take your shoes off because all the time too, I'd be, I'd be like frazzled, taking off all my jewelry, taking off my shoes, taking the stuff out of my bag to go through the airport sensor. Like, stop, just get TSA approved. It's worth it. Tax write off double check with your bookkeeper. Should be a tax write-off, but get TSA approved. Quit being so cheap, okay? And, and when you think about it in this way too, it was last I knew it was $90 to get that done for five years. What do you have to sell? What, two more people in your coaching group? 10 more pairs of you know earrings, five candles. I don't know what it is, but get it done. Okay, next, point number three, upgrade your travel seats. Okay, so listen. Uh, since I fly mostly Southwest, you don't have the ability to do first class because Southwest doesn't have that. However, they do have business select. I always fly business select. Well, why do you do that, Jen? Well, it's guaranteed that I'm in position A1 through A15. Um, I don't like to have to be on my app 24 hours before check-in for Southwest. And I check in with 23 hours and 59 minutes, you know, to spare. So I'm like, literally like right at the exact time I'm checking in and I still get B12. And I'm like, what? How is that even possible? I checked in right at the same time. Friends, you just got to get the business select seats. Then you don't even have to check in until you're literally at the airport. If you want, you don't have to ever worry. You just automatically get seats A1 through A15. So you're the first on the plane. Why do you want to be the first on the plane? The experience is totally different. You feel different standing at the front of the line. You feel different getting onto the front of the plane. You get to pick your seats. Obviously, you get to pick the side of the plane you want. Do you want to see the sunset? Do you want to see the sunrise? You get to, you know, be right up front. Then you're also the first off, okay? Um, The first time that I ever got really convicted of like just needing to quit being so cheap, I was flying Southwest. And, um, and you know, there was a time when we always tried to find the cheapest flights, the very cheapest. Uh, we never do that anymore. I fly direct a hundred percent of the time, if it's possible, direct only. I do not want to lay over, especially in the year 2022. And I should have just made this point number seven. In fact, I'll talk about that in a second. But, um, so, you know, back when I had an assistant making my travel reservations and, um, you know, and I had to kind of start educating her because she would always be looking for the cheapest for me also. And so I was way down the list on the Southwest flight. And so had to sit in the middle seat and I posted a picture, you know, on Facebook or something back when Facebook was alive and (laughs) just kidding, just kidding, Facebook. And somebody commented, they said, Jennifer, I think when you have like a verified check behind your name on Facebook, you've probably earned the right to spend the money on getting a first class ticket. And I was like, oh, ouch, she's probably right. 
And so listen, I want you again to think of the experience, okay? I fly Southwest, like I said, 90% of the time. We have a Southwest credit card. So we get free flights and free upgrades like all of the time. I always do the business select so I'm on the plane first or at least close to it. I like to pick a window seat every single time because I used to be such a nervous flyer. And I found that if I sit by the window and I can look out, my stress level goes way down. So it's a lot less stress. You're going to feel way more bougie. Okay. It'll get you in the right mind to focus on business because you're in business mode, even when you're on the plane. All right. So speaking of being on the plane brings me to point number four, buy the Wi-Fi. Come on friends. What is it? $8 on Southwest. I don't know what it is on everybody else, but again, this is usually a write-off by the way, if you are um, one of like the prime people um, for Southwest, you do get the Wi-Fi for free. So that's one of the reasons it's really nice to have a Southwest credit card. But again, it's a, it's a write-off. You can work on the plane. You can write your social media posts. You could return some emails. You can think through a lot of the things and work on some things on the plane that you haven't been able to focus on because of the daily grind. You know, when you're literally in your business, a lot of times you just don't get chance to think. And so it's nice to be able to actually do that on the plane, post some things that you actually want to. So quit being so cheap and buy the Wi-Fi. Buy it. Again, a write-off. Okay. Um, And this is a really good time too, when you're on the plane, to be setting your intentions for whatever it is that you're wanting to like get out of the mastermind or the event. And I never like watch a movie on the plane ever. You know, I mean, the truth is everybody watches a movie, but you're not everybody. You're a rock star. You're an entrepreneur. And so behave as so. Don't use that time to just do mindless things unless that's really what your brain needs. Use that time. It's uninterrupted, quiet time to prepare your heart and your mind for the event that you're going to. So by the Wi-Fi, I said what I said. All right. Point number five, have a driver booked for when you land. Okay. Renting a car is time spent in another line, which is stressful. Then you've got to get directions, which is stressful. stressful. Then you've got to navigate a strange city, which is stressful. And it's, you know, it's often more money than just hiring a driver to take you from the airport to the hotel. Of course, you can do an Uber, but listen, you feel different when you have somebody waiting for you versus getting on an app, watching, you know, where they're at, they're coming around the corner, yada, yada. I love having somebody standing there with a sign with my last name on it. You can call me a diva if you want. It feels different. And if you've never had that done, you need to do it just once. Okay. And so listen, you can um, Google driving services in whatever city that you're going to. You can have a, a VA or an assistant do it for you, but having a driver waiting for you, game changer. All right. Number six, don't share a room just to save money when you're going to a conference, unless you absolutely love the person you're sharing the room with and you love to share a space in general. If you're an introvert like myself, Every day, like when you're done with that mastermind, that conference, whatever, like you need to decompress. And that is critical, crucial time for you. Time to just like ponder and process and mull over the events of the day. It's not the time to have a roommate because having a roommate can ruin that like decompression time for you, especially as an introvert. So I suggest you never share a room unless you just absolutely have to, or unless you love people and you're a complete extrovert and that just makes you feel so much better. So we're going to do that last one, which I had forgot, which is point number seven. Always fly direct. Listen, I fly a couple times a month, okay? Both for, you know, for us to go to our home down in Florida, back from Kansas City. Um, Now we're going to be flying back and forth all the time with Easton being 19 hours away at college in Phoenix. And that's where our next home is going to be as well. So we'll be going back and forth to that. And so um, I will tell you this, in, in the year 2022, having a direct flight is worth every single dollar. If you are somebody who is always trying to find the cheapest flight with layovers and everything else, just know that at least half of the time, at least half of the time, you are going to be delayed. Your flight is going to get bumped. You're going to miss something. Because the the oh, the aviation industry is a mess, friends. Can I just say that? I just want to say that it's really messy right now. All flights are being shifted, changed, rerouted, what have you. So if you're not flying direct, you have a 50-50 shot at actually, you know, your flight going per the usual. I literally know professional speakers right now who every time they are going to speak um, at an event, they make two flights on two different airlines so that they have a better chance of one of them actually making it. This is how bad the aviation industry is at the moment. I asked on my Instagram stories a while back, do you think it's going to get better? And several people are like, yes, yes, yes. And several people are like, not for a couple of years. 
not for a couple of years. And so I think that that's super interesting. And so if you just want to get to where you're going and be there on time with more peace, then do a direct flight. Okay. All right. So listen, some of you who are listening right now, you have had imposter syndrome in business for a long, long time. You feel like you don't belong. You don't feel like you're a professional. You don't feel like you know what you're doing. And one of the things that will actually help you is if you start spending some money, like you're a professional when it comes to traveling for your business. If you have invested in my mastermind, ladies, talking to you, but I love you. Or if you have invested in going to an event or going to a conference, like invest in the arrangements, they're going to set you up so that you can go and receive all that you want to at the event. This is not the time to be going in and rolling in stressed out and cutting corners, okay? And I know that it might be tempting to think, okay, but what are my friends and family going to think? Well, first of all, do they even need to know? Does your do your do Does your friend group need to know that you just up your tickets? Do they need to know that you didn't shop for the cheapest one? No, you're worried about stuff that they don't even need to know about and aren't even going to care about. What does it honestly matter? Most of the people who are in your world probably work for someone else. And when they travel, somebody else is footing the bill, right? And so you're footing your own bill. And you're also responsible for footing the bill in such a way and paying for the best experience possible so that you can get the most out of whatever it is that you're going to. Okay? And so when you are an entrepreneur, as most of you are who are listening to my podcast right now, You don't work for someone else and you have to stir up your own self when it comes for, you know, to getting ready to go to a conference, to a convention for work. People at a regular nine to five, they don't have the same vulnerability as you do. They don't have the pressure of spinning all of the plates in a business like you do, of making sure you make payroll and taxes and all the things. So if you're worried about what other people are actually going to think of how you travel for work, you are worried about the wrong things. And remember what it says in Proverbs, when you are that worried about what other people think of you, you are setting a trap for yourself. And that trap is going to keep you small. Fear of man is a snare is what it says. So listen, the bottom line is this: you work really hard. You've invested money to go somewhere and learn or speak or serve or what have you. It should always be a write-off. Again, double check with your bookkeeper. Um, and once you start to do some of these things in your travel, you'll never go back. You're going to be ruined forever to just going back to standing in the regular line instead of TSA. You're not going to want to drive yourself to the airport anymore. You can get places on the cheap, but you're maxed out on stress. And that is such backwards thinking and poverty mindset behavior. Okay. So spend the money to get to every single thing that you can out of the experience or to give all you can at an event if you're going there to serve. And do it with the least amount of stress. You're going to thank you so much for this com- for this conversation and this podcast later. So do me a favor. If you loved this, I want you to send this podcast right now to five of your friends who are in business. I know that you travel with a group of ladies once a year or so. You all get together. You like to brainstorm. You like to just, you know, let your hair down. Send this to them. Send this to them. You can be cheap in other areas, but don't be cheap here. Okay. Bless you so much. Thanks for coming to my traveling TED talk today. (laughs) I'll catch you next week on the podcast. Bye-bye. Friend, thank you so much for listening to the podcast again this week. I'm so honored that you come back for every episode and that you share the Jennifer Allwood show with your friends and family. Every time I see you guys post about it on Instagram or Facebook or something, it just makes me do a little happy. So thank you. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast if you never want to miss an episode. So you can go to Apple Podcasts or Stitcher or Spotify or any of the other podcasting places and subscribe each week so that every week you get the new episode when it releases. So just know that I love bringing you relevant content. I love bringing you great guests. And one of the ways you can help us here at Team Allwood is by leaving the podcast a review. So if you have just a second to do that, would you go over and leave a review for the Jennifer Allwood Show? Thank you again. You're amazing. I'm honored to be here. Until next week. Bye-bye.